قال رب شرح صدري ويسر أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاك الله خير for joining me today for the Arabic lesson one part of CLD delivery so if you've missed any lessons um, since the start of our Arabic level one course you can come on to this YouTube playlist and uh, catch up on any lessons that you've missed inshallah and that doesn't just mean for Arabic it also stands for any other classes that we run on a weekly basis that is Arabic for children that we've introduced you can catch up with the Jweed classes, Koida classes we also um, have the children's madrasa course starting next month um, and inshallah you can also come on to the YouTube to catch up on any lessons if for any reason your child could not make <coughs> the lesson for one week so for one of those weeks so um inshallah this is a new um initiative that we've taken as an institute just to help people um learn continue to learn if they cannot make classes all the time alhamdulillah um so arabic level one is the adults course that we are running um and the lesson number one basically focuses on parts of speech and inshallah we'll go through the arabic alphabet the arabic vowels indefinite and definite articles, noun endings, and the nominal sentence, inshallah. And I'll refer you back to the Medina book. Before I continue, um, I'd like to draw your attention to this web link here, where you can download the resources for free. Um, there is a disclaimer here at the end of this slide, which says there are no copyrights reserved for this material. You may take copies and distribute them feasibly. So alhamdulillah, whoever designed these, my lost mother reward them for their initiative and they shared it online for you to download them. Parts of speech, English versus Arabic, we have in English eight parts of speech. So that is noun, pronoun, adjective, adverb, interjection, verb, conjunction and preposition. In Arabic, we focus only on three parts of speech. That is noun, ismun, and the verb fi'lun, and harfun, okay, which is particle, verb and particle. Okay, so just a quick introduction. A noun is basically a name of anything. So a name of a book, pens, name of things, objects, name of people, name of um, countries, cities. Okay, so just a name of an object, anything. Verbs are action, actions. So any action that you do, action verbs. So eating, drinking, sleeping, and traveling. Particle is the harf. So it's like a preposition. Okay, and it's like off, at, okay, so um, anything that you use like that, like a preposition or it comes under the preposition or a particle. Okay, <clears throat> so obviously we've been through ism, fitlun, and harfun. Um, inshallah, I've just gone through them in Arabic with you. Um, there are 29 letters in the Arabic alphabet, okay. Alif serves two uh, purposes. Okay, and inshallah, we will go through them. We will talk about alif as um, alif that elongates as a consonant, and alif that is a, um, you know, um, that which we cut. Okay, so um, like in hamza. Okay, so it is two types that we will inshallah discuss. There are three short and three long vowels, okay, and we'll go through them quickly. Fatha is a vowel which is, and the vowel is this line, this stroke on top of a letter. So you see the letter dal, it's the same letter in three ways, but you see the voweling on top and then at the bottom and on top again, it changes. So there's a stroke at the top which denotes an er uh sound, er. Uh. If the stroke is beneath a letter, any letter, that could be any letter in the Arabic alphabet, it would denote as more of an E on a, uh, they said a uh sound, but it's more of an E sound. And then you have the Dhamma, which is the U sound, it denotes like an U sound. So these are the short vowels, so you say A, E, O, okay? A, E, O, they're very short. Um, if there is a letter, where there is no, there's no vowel present, so there's no fatah, there's no kasra, and there's no dhamma on it. We call it a sakun, a letter, a, a letter without a vowel is sakun or sakin. Okay, 
And if you notice in the letter Madrasatun, you have the dal here with a scorn with, with a small circle. And it's not the same as this because this is like a, a looped in. It's looped in and out. And this one is a, you know, a complete round circle. The long vowels, okay, they're added to the um, associated letters, which basically means the er uh sound is uh, associated with the olive. Okay, so uh, the e sound is denoted with the ya, yeah, and the u sound is, donate, is uh, associated with the wow. Okay, and it's a long a, uh, so it's double. So here we say a, uh, here we say a, uh, here we say e, here we say e, here we say u, and here we say u. Okay, now obviously they've. Um, that's just the vowel standing alone. But if we if we say it as on the letter, we say the, the, do. Okay. And if we say the vowels independently alone, we say a, e, u. Okay. But once we place them on a letter, the name of the let this letter is dal. So when we put a vowel on it, we say da, di, do. And then if we if we if we place the long vowels, which are the actual letters, we say da, di, do. So we elongate it to counts, okay. I hope that makes sense. If you are taking the tweet, it will be easier for you to understand and grasp that. Um, we come now to indefinite and definite articles. Um, and like in English, we also have the same. In Arabic, we have two uh, similar articles, which are definite, uh, the same article, sorry, definite and definite. The indefinite is called nakira, and the definite is called ma'rifa. Okay, ma'rifa is basically or ma'rifa is basically a known article, known uh, definite article, and unknown definite or indefinite article. So indefinite article, it's um, with tanween. Tanween is basically double voweling. So double voweling is referred to as tanween. It could be a double voweling of a dhamma, which is the u sound that we saw. And it could be a double violin of the a sound, which is the fata, and it could be double violin of the kasra, which is the e sound. Okay, double violin basically means a, a double vowel. Okay, that's all it means, and it means tanween. You call that tanween. It doubles the vowel sign at the end of the word. So kita bun. So instead of saying kita bu, which is one vowel, if we have a double vowel, we put on the end. A n sound noon. Kitabun kursiyun. Okay, instead of saying kursi and kitabu, because why it's doubled. And that is a book and a chair. So this is nakira indefinite because we are talking uh, about a book, okay, one of a kind, a book and a chair. When we're talking in terms of a definite article, we indicate by prefixing it with al, alif la. And that basically denotes the, the meaning the, okay? The double vowel here, it it, it doesn't literally, literally mean a, uh, but that's what the meaning is, it denotes, okay? It means or implies the meaning of a book, okay? So the double vowel here, it means a. Uh. The alif lam prefixed to a noun means the. And if you notice what, what they've done here is deleted the double voweling and put a singular vowel at the end. Because you because if you look here, it says al and then we cannot coexist. So al kitabu will be incorrect. So you cannot have al and the double vowel together. So just put that up here. You cannot have the two together. So um, if it is double voweling, it's a book, it's indefinite. If it's alif lam, al with one vowel, it's ma'rifa, it's definite. I hope that's clear, inshallah. Uh, please note, many proper nouns like Khalidun and Muhammadin, these are names of people, and with a tanwin, a double vowel, but they are still definite. Okay, so they're not um, indefinite, they are definite, just like the definite article of Alif Lam, and we'll come to those because these are proper nouns. Okay. Um, noun endings, there are three types of noun endings, I will go through them. Those of um, this, those of you who are studying Arabic at a higher level, may, maybe at a university, you will need to know the Arabic terminologies um, and the case endings. So 
In Arabic, we have uh, different endings to show the function in the centers. So um, we have three. We have nominative case, which is marfu' on. Then we have accusative case, which is mansubun. Then we have a genitive case, which is majrurun. And that is basically a marfu' is with a damma, which is the u sound. We saw that the u. The mansub is with a fatha, which is a double wiling of uh, the strokes on top. And then you have two strokes at the bottom, which denote to kasra. And this is a double wiling of kasra. So just to pronounce them, Muhammadun. Baban, uh, mah, ma, oh, sorry, Muhammadin, Muhammadin, Muhammadun, okay, and Baban, or oh, here's Muhammadan, so let's stick to the names, okay, Muhammadun, Muhammadan, Muhammadin, and basically it depends on the status of your sentence what, what, when it becomes more four months over major. So if there's a subject, it's more four. Okay, when that subject becomes an object, so it's it's not the primary uh, subject that you're speaking about in a sentence, then it'll become an object, and an object always takes a fatta, and a subject will always take a dhamma. Okay, and uh, Muhammad is a basically a possessor of a thing, and it becomes uh, it, it becomes after a preposition or an adverb, then it becomes in the case of majrur, which is a kasra or double kasra, and that's the three case endings that you would need to know. Okay, this is really important to know once you come to do your numbers as well in Arabic, which could be a little bit confusing. So then we go on to our nominal sentence, which is called jumla, jumla ismiya, a jumla ismiya. A sentence that starts with a noun. So uh, ismiya, as we've said before, it is a noun, a nominal sentence. It has a mubtada, which is a subject, and it has a predicate, which is a cover. Now, mubtada is the subject that what you are speaking about in a sentence, what you're focusing on, and your predicate is the information you are giving on that subject. The subject is always going to be in a nominative case, which is marfu'un, and we've just seen that. And the predicate will also be in a marfu'un case, okay? But the only difference is the um, predicate will be uh, definite. Um, okay, uh, sorry, the subject will be definite, and the object, the predicate, the khabar will be nakira, which is indefinite, okay? Subject is definite and the predicate is indefinite. So let's have a look at some examples here. So the first three are circled. They are mubtada, which is subject, marfu'un, because they end in a dhamma, okay? <clears throat> and we'll come back to the ismu uh, shara and ma'rifatun. So they are known, okay? So they are known, okay? And hada is, we are pointing. So when we do hada, we'll, we'll describe what it means um, in detail in our next lesson. So here you have the muqtada subject, which is marfu'un. Then you have your khabar, which is jadidun, maksurun, baytun. And here khabar is marfu'un again, because why it ends in a dhamma, but the only difference is it ends in a double vowel. And we already said anything with a double vowel becomes nakira, indefinite, it means er. Uh. Okay, er. Uh. Okay, al-kitabu, the book is new okay so um in, in the indefinite means uh, but here we use it as a nakira because it's coming after um it's because it's, it's a cover okay that's why we put it in indefinite okay so uh the book is new but we don't say the book is a new we don't say that but it still is uh indefinite and here as we said the definite article is prefixed with the al that means we've removed the double vowel at the end. So instead of saying kitabu, we'll say al kitabu. Okay, we just put one dhamma. Al kala qalamu becomes with the one dhamma. Okay. And hada and the thalika, inshallah, we'll look at our next lesson. So here we've come to the end of our lesson. So the first lesson was basically an introduction to Arabic. Uh, second lesson, we will go into detail and look at um, the pages of in uh, the exercise pages that we're going to take in the Medina book. Just like I have for watching, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and so that you can be updated every time we upload a new lesson. Just like I have for watching, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and so that you can be updated every time we upload a new lesson.